civil society group have stormed the National Assembly to protest against the proposed hate speech and social media bill. Protesters are also demanding immediate release of Mr. Omoyele Shore, who has been in custody of the Department of State service despite being granted bail by the courts. Protesters are many bearing placard and banner denouncing the social media hate speech bill. They said the bill were another draconian decree to guard Nigerian populace. They described the plan to regulate social media and curb hate speech in the country as a disguise to infringe on the right of Nigerians to free speech. Like it or not, we are faced with two obnoxious bills, the, the anti-social media bill and the hate speech bill. These bills are completely out of place. They have no place in a democracy. And whether anybody likes it or not, this is taking tyranny to the next level. And Nigerians must condemn it. Nigerians must not condone it. These bills have no place in our laws, in our nation, because the Cybercrime Act of 2015 has already aptly you know, captured the provisions of these bills in its entirety. Section 24, go and read section. We, we, we want to draw the attention of the National Assembly both the Red Chamber and the Green Chamber, to the, to the provision of Section 24 of the Cyber Crime Act of 2015. That section of that act of the National Assembly has expressly you know, captured all the provisions that the social media bill and the hate speech bill you know, ought to capture. So we believe that it's, a, it's an overreach and an overkill and that this will only land the country in deep troubles. And that is the reason why we are gathered here to protest and ask that these two obnoxious bills be shut down by the Ninth Senate. Meanwhile, the legislature credited to sponsoring of social media regulatory bills, Senator Mohamed Musa, has listed the objective and the purpose for which the commission is to be established to eliminate all form of a species in Nigeria and to avoid the government on all aspects thereof. The Protection from Internet Falsehood and Manipulation Bill, which is also known as Social Media Bill, has passed the second reading on the floor of the Senate. The bill passed the second reading with support from the majority of the senators, despite the opposition to the proposed legislation by Nigerian citizens who are of the opinion that the bill seeks to fight free speech. The President of the Senate, Hamid Lawa, has said that both chamber of the National Assembly may pass 2020 budget by next Wednesday. Lawa, in a statement by his media office, on Tuesday stated this when a delegation from the Institute of Chartered Accountant of Nigeria paid a cost visit to his office at National Assembly Abuja. He said the Senate and House Committee on Appropriation sought a one-week extension to enable them to conclude work on the report of the 2020 appropriation bill to be laid next Tuesday. In the related development, the House of Representatives defied the consideration of the report on the 2020 appropriation bill till next Tuesday. Speaker Femi Bajabia Miller made this known at the Tuesday plenary. The National Assembly has shared the consideration for the report of the Committee on Appropriation on the National Budget for November 28. But Jabia Miller however said the consideration and adaptation of the report will be delayed to allow thorough work on it. He said, we have deferred this to next Tuesday because we are putting finishing touches on the budget. The Senate has condemned the incident of electoral violence that marred the recently held Kogi and Baisa gubernatorial poll, lamenting the wanton to damage the lives and properties. The constitution of the matter on the floor of the Red Chamber followed a motion brought on the floor at the plenary where dangerous interjectory the nation's democratic journey 
has taken came under the spotlight and cross session of the senators and senate president said perpetrator of electoral violence need to be punished happening on the need for the country's security agencies to be alive to their duties of protecting life of citizens always and particularly during the election people have been known and seen to perpetuate violence nothing has been done to them and once nothing is done to somebody once nobody pays a price for criminality of this nature it only breeds further violence and so what we should also add there is that the law enforcement agencies must be up to task the the husband of the woman that was killed in Kogi has identified those who came and did this dastardly act, but nothing till today. We have not heard. All that we have been hearing is all manners of um, excuses for that. And we will also say this. Where there is now a pattern, if you don't curb it through the use of law uh, enforcement, you will only see that pattern continue to grow. And we would want to urge uh, the, uh, uh, all the uh, legal instruments that can be used in this country to be able to curb electoral violence today. Our failure to prosecute and punish the perpetrators of electoral violence who are known is going to lead to the perpetration of this act because it adds to the impunity of the process. Therefore, I think it is important if the minority leader and myself can come up with a bipartisan bill to look at the punishment for electoral violence and see how we can raise a law in this particular chamber and also in the, in the Federal House of Representatives to really take do note of this process and prescribe a legal regime that's going to be able to address it. Electoral violence knows no partisanship. Let us be very, very clear about it. All the politicians on all sides are guilty. Violence did not start when APC came to power. Violence started, as I said, from the beginning, particularly it, gets, it got bad from the beginning of our, of our democratic journey from 1999. Of course, there were some pockets of violence in the previous democratic experiences, but they have not been as bad and terrible as they are today. If we don't curb this particular phenomenon, it's going to be very dangerous for our polity. So the minority leader, as well as the Senate leader, spoke the minds of all of us here. No party is uh, absorbed from, from this blame, and it is for us politicians to ensure that we continue to enlighten our people to face politics as a game of ideas. I believe that those who perpetrated the violence, especially in the last uh, elections in Belsa and Kwagi, should be apprehended and prosecuted. And I believe that this is the way to go. People should pay the price of their actions. With this, let me call on us for one minute's prayer, observance of one minute silence. At the end of the deliberation on the present subject, the Senate charged the National Retention Agency, NOA, and the National Electoral Body, INEC, to enlighten the citizen on the ill of electoral violence. Bavidi Luxury Hotel, the newest home away from home in the Nigerian hospitality industry. Ten minutes only from the local and international airports is the perfect spot for your relaxation whenever you are in Lagos. 24-hour non-stop electricity, cozy and colorful rooms, Wi-Fi internet connection, and flat screen cable television. Bavidi Luxury Hotel, our exquisite restaurant and full bar are simply second to none in taste and style. Bavidi Luxury Hotel, we are located at the posh serene neighborhood in the KJB business district. Your satisfaction is our first concern, so we train our staff to be professional and personable. Bavidi Luxury Hotel, number 20 Moshuda Bella Crescent, Ikeja, Lagos. Telephone, plus 234-1291-7929, plus 234-708-287-7512. Bavidi Luxury Hotel, the new home away from home.
Some stakeholder in Kogi State have passed a vote of no confidence on the police and other security agencies over the alleged complicity in this regularity and violence that trailed the November 16th governorship and centrally run election in the state. Stakeholders drawn from various political parties, religious body, and civil society organizations and vulnerable groups made their position new at the meeting organized by INEC in Nokoja ahead of the Saturday supplementary election for Kogi West and as well as rerun election in Ajakuta Federal Constituency. Representative of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, Reverend Samuel Owolabi, who described the last election in Kogi as a civil war, pointed out that police and other security agents stood by and did nothing while political talk on lynch violence and innocent voters who turned out to exercise their franchise. Also speaking, the Secretary of Jamatu Nasri Islam in the state, Alaji Isa Ajiboye, said INEC put necessary preparation in place prior to the election, adding that it was sad the security agency did, did not provide the needed atmosphere for the peaceful conduct of the election. In his remark, the leader of the civil society group, Natani Abanida, alleged complicity on the part of the INEC for its failure to cancel election in polling unit marred by widespread violence and snatching of ballot buses in the Ward A of local particularly polling unit in crowded Memorial College, St. Luke School, Muslim Community School, local Club, St. Mary Church, and hosts of other. Earlier, INEC resident electoral commissioner in Kogi State, Professor James Arpam told stakeholders that a supplementary election will hold in 53 polling units across the seven local government areas in Kogi West Centurial District, while a rerun will hold in 22 polling units across Ajakuta Federal Constituency on November 30th simultaneously. The police in Kogi State said it has arrested six suspects in connection with the killing of the former councillor and the women leader of the People's Democratic Party, Salimin Abu. Abu was set ablaze on November 18 in her husband's house at Osha Damo in a full local government area of the state by suspected political talk during the violence that erupted after the Kogi State governorship election. Result was released. Police first man, DSP Williams Aya said his wife speaking with newsmen in Lokoja. Aya said the suspects were brought in on Friday. The police spokesman said the police have started interrogating the suspect to ascertain their level of culpability in the woman's death. He said the outcome of the investigation will be made public as soon as it was completed. President Hamad Bari and on Sunday directed police to arrest the killer of Abu with a view to bringing them to justice. The Congress of University Academics has directed university lecturers to comply with the federal government directives to register on the Integrated Payroll and Personal Information System, IPPIS. The National Publicity Coordinator of the Congress, Dr. Nwoko Yebushi, a fraction of the Academic Staff Union of University, gave the counter directive at a meeting by the members of the Congress in Port Accord also have rejected the federal government directive mandating workers at its university and college of education to enroll into IPPIS before December 7. As to sue for patients from the federal government promising to develop a new payroll template for university. But Onyebuchi said that rather than wait for a new template, that IPPIS scheme will improve academic system in national tertiary institutions. According to him, those campaigning against the implementation of IPPIS in the university are being economical with the truth and not telling their union member the old truth. Oyibu said it was untrue statement credited to ASU that sabbatical payment was not captured in the payroll system. He said that contrary to this claim that IPPIS intend to open a desk in every university to ensure success of the scheme. 
Onyebuchi also debunked the claim that the scheme was for university to civil service bureaucracy.